Hello everybody, I'm Nick. In this video, I'm going to talk about the single biggest mistake that people make when they write integration tests for an application that is using EF Core, and that is replacing the real database provider during testing with the in-memory version. If you have integration tests right now on EF Core and you replace whatever you're using, Postgres SQL Server, Cosmos DB, and you replace that with the in-memory provider, you don't have integration tests, or at least you don't have good integration tests. Those things are flaky, those things are bad, and they're not testing a critical component of your application's flow, which is the conversion of your DB context code and all that link and everything you've written there to whatever your database accepts. Those query generations are part of your integration point, and changing that to the in-memory is a massive no-no because you completely remove that conversion, which leads to very, very flaky tests, and your integration tests won't fail in the same way your application will fail when the time comes for it to fail. So in this video, I'm going to explain all that, and I will show you how you can solve that problem very, very easily. So let me show you what I have here. I have a simple customer's API over here, and I also have an integration test project, which does have integration tests. So what I'm going to do is just first run the API to show you what I have here. So the API is running. I'll go to Insomnia and I'll go and create a customer. So let's say I want to create a Nick Chapters over here. So customer has been created and I can actually see that the customer has been created because I can see the customer over here. They can retrieve the customer, update it, delete it, and so on. And let's say we wanted to write integration tests for something like this. I'll just delete this customer first and show you what I have in my services because the most important part is that I'm injecting an app DB context into the customer service, and then I have all of my entity framework core code here. So the mistake that people make is that they say, oh, in your program.cs, you register your real Postgres connection string and all that. What you're going to do in your integration test is you're going to replace that with your in-memory provider. So what I'll do is I'm going to go to my test here. I have two tests testing the exact same thing. The reason for that is because the sort of two schools of thought when it comes to validating your test. One says that you can simply validate the response that you get from the API because those are integration tests using the web application factory. But there's another one that says you should go all the way down to your database, get that object you created and validate it that way. What I did is I added both. You can choose to do whatever you want. I don't want to have the discussion to be focused on that. That's why I'm covering both approaches. The main thing is that people will go into the web application factory and they would do the following. They would say override the configure web host, which gives you access to the web host builder. And now you can say builder dot configure services or configure test services. And what this does is it gives you access to the DI container, which means I can actually say remove the real provider now because it's time for me to run my tests and use the in-memory one. How can I do that? Well, first you need to add the Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore.InMemory package over here. And by the way, all this code is in the description down below. And then once you do that to wire Entity Framework to use the in-memory version, you have to first remove the configuration of Postgres. So what you would say is get the single registration. So service.service type equals type of the DB context options of that DB context, so DB context, that's enough. You don't need to remove the DB context. All you need to remove is the options, the configuration, and then you can say add DB context over here, app DB context, and you can say that configure this to use the in-memory database. I'm gonna give it a name, I'm just gonna say tests, and that's it. And now if I go ahead and I kill my database, so database is not running, as you can see, connection refused, if I go ahead and I run my integration test, which I have too, so if I run it, they're both going to pass. And this actually does work. I'm going to just go ahead and stick a breakpoint over here and let's take a breakpoint on the controller level as well over here. So if I go back to my tests and I say, go ahead and debug it, then you'll see, and I'm going to need another breakpoint here too, then you'll see it's coming here. It's going to the API, making that call using the web application factory. The request comes in, creates the user, returns a response, all that using the in-memory DB context, then comes back, gets the response. Customer was created on the response level, but we also want to check the database. So I have access to the DB context, which as you can see over here is the in-memory one. So I'm going to say, just select everything again. Database is not running, but I'm getting a response. 
and I'm validating. The problem is that this is more of a functional test. This doesn't actually test my integration point. Now, before I move on, I'd like to let you know that we just launched a brand new course on Dome Train called From Zero to Hero Messaging in .NET with Mass Transit. And it's an amazing six and a half hour course by Rina Skurtu, who will teach you everything you need to know about queues, pub sub messages, but also show you how you can use it with Mass Transit, which is the most popular library for doing messaging in .NET by far. Messaging exists in basically every single application. And if you join a company, it is very, very likely they will be using Mass Transit. So you must know both concepts very, very well. And Irina won't only teach you the basics, but she will also go into very, very advanced production ready patterns, such as the Outbox pattern, the Saga pattern, and so on. The concept in the library is a must know for every single developer. And to celebrate the launch, the first 400 of you can use discount code TRANSIT20 at checkout to get 20% off. Now back to the video. So how would you make this test be what it should be, which is using the real database? Well, with test containers. So what you would do is you would say test containers and then choose a database technology that you use. In this case, it's Postgres. I'm going to say install that. And then I'm just going to configure slightly my I class feature for the web application factory. So I'm going to say that this has an I async lifetime because I want to start and stop a container asynchronously. So yes, we are going to use Docker, but don't worry. Your CI almost definitely supports Docker. I'm going to say that this is actually a new method. Here we go. And then I'm going to add my container. So I'm going to say private read only PostgreSQL container. And that's going to be my database container. And that's going to be a new PostgreSQL builder. So I'm going to say with username workshop with password password, which is what I have in the real application too. And then with database my DB. And I'm going to go ahead and just build that. And once I do that, I can go ahead and say, hey, just start this in the beginning. So start async. And in the end, after all the tests are run, you can go ahead and stop it asynchronously. And as you're going to see, no container is running over here. We have no running containers. But I can now go up here and say, use npg SQL. And I will pass down the connection string from that container because it does give me a connection string, as you can see over here, it builds an appropriate connection string for that database technology. And now if I go ahead and I say run all of my tests, again, nothing exists, but now we can see the container is starting. And as you can see, both of my tests passed and they used the real database. Now for a CI scenario, you have to add this into your CI pipeline, but CI tools support Docker containers. So it is something you can totally do. It's something I've been doing for the past three years already for my CI as well. And it works like a charm and I have reliable integration tests. But now I want to know from you, do you have any test related gotchas like this? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.